Shalom, Shalom Israel. First and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Rakadash. Double honor to our apostles and elders, and salutation to you, hopeful elect, and you sincere, Akim out there. Today's lesson, and what I want to get into is is breaking breaking the stronghold. And what I mean by that is all these philosophies and doctrines that we've been taught growing up in the Catholic Church, Christian Church, you can't you can't bring that into the truth. You can't you're not gonna be able to mix that into the truth. And a lot of these people get gets the uh <clears throat> get stuck on these doctrines, man. They think being an Israelite is just the same as <laughs> Being an Israelite is the same as a Christian, but now, now you, now you just an Israelite. Now, now you know you the people of the book. So we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring the hell. We're gonna bring back. We're gonna bring Satan rebelling. We're gonna, we're gonna bring back all these wicked, wicked doctrines, man. And through the, the Spirit, I'm just gonna get some scriptures and just go into them and try to break, break some of these strongholds. So, <clears throat> first scripture I got. Let, let's let's address this this hell doctrine thing first. Actually, no, not that. Oh yeah, that, that goes into it. It goes into it. What I'm about to get into. So the story that uh, Job, as you guys know, this is this is gonna disprove how Satan does what does what he wants to do. Satan is his uh, own master. Satan doesn't have to listen to the Most High. Satan goes against what the Most High tells him to do. No, it's none of that. Satan's up there with the Most High on the left-hand side doing and following orders that the Most High gives him, man. He's not underground, burning up for eternity, waiting for all these evil souls to come down there so he can torture them. And all that, all that stuff is going That's nonsense, man. Completely going off. Hell is not a, a place where you get judged <laughs> if you was being wicked. Not a place that you being judged and you get, you get sent down and, and burned for eternity. No. So let's get this. Job, and this might be kind of a lengthy lesson, so just bear with me. Job, this is 2 and verse 1. And there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Satan was there. Now, why was, now why was Satan there? Satan's underground burning burning people why why is he why is he up there with the most high we gotta ask yourself that a question in, in this account let's find out and the lord said unto satan from whence comest thou where, where, where are you coming from Satan? where you been and satan answered the lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from from walking up and down it and the Lord said unto Satan, How thou consider my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth evil, one that feareth the most high like him, and escheweth evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Saint and Saint answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give. Will he give for his life? But put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. He's basically take take away what he has, take away what you're giving him. Verse six. And the Lord said unto Satan, But he is in thine hand, but save. I thought, I thought I missed something. I thought I missed something. Okay, verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went forth Satan from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto, unto his crown. And he took him, and he took him a pot shirt to scrape himself with all, and he sat among the ashes. Now look, most I still Satan. His hand is in thine hand, but save his life. Now, if Satan was just wicked, 
and he, well, he is wicked. But if say, if Satan was not happy to listen to the Most High, why did why did he save his life when the, when the Most High told him to? When Yahweh told him to, to to save his life, why didn't why didn't why didn't Satan was like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. I'm about to go do what I want to do. I'm about to just go kill him. That 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 show you how who's in power. He didn't do that. Satan got the order, got the instructions, and he went to go do what he had to do. But it's Job. Job was still alive, right? He he didn't kill Job, did he? No. So why is it that we still believe in in this nonsense? Nowhere in the scriptures are you gonna find fucking hell burning up for eternity fire and all that stuff. You're not gonna you're not gonna find it in there, man. You burn when when did the spiritual things ever get burnt by physical stuff? There's never there's no account of that ever happening in the scriptures, man. Here you we got a, we got a, a a spirit on fire. So that was that. All right, that instance. That's what I wanted on that. Let's keep going. Second Chronicles. I'm gonna start up a little bit. I'm gonna start at sixteen. Yeah, Second Chronicles eighteen, verse sixteen. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountain as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that you would not prophesy good unto me but evil? Again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. All the hosts of heaven standing on the right and the left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, the king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake after this manner, and another saying after this manner. After that manner, so they over here, they over here giving suggestions. Most high, it's like you, you had a, a a business meeting, and you have everybody, like you have the manager, the head of the the CEO, or whatever, and everybody's giving ideas for a new product or what should the company do next, and the the CEO just listening to everybody, listening to everybody. That's what the most high is doing right now. So he's listening to everybody's, you know, suggesting how how they're going to entice uh entice the king. Verse 20. Then there came out a spear and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? With what? What you gonna do? Let me let me hear your idea. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And then the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Get the evil spirits up there, man. The lying spirits. Is, is a lying spirit on, on, the, on the righteous side? No. So we got over here, we got the, uh, I remember in, in Psalms, he said, uh, uh, give me one second, hold on. I want to get that precept. I don't think I have it. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Bear with me. Um, this is a good precept right here. Because it's not <clears throat> um, how we how we predict everything or how we see everything. Because they think here's the doctrine that Satan rebelled and he took he took some of the angels some of the angels that he took with him or he convinced they over here having secret councils in the heavens secret councils and he over here he have all, a lot of the angels around we got the good ones. The so-called good angels, the so-called all the angels was good, and and Satan and Satan was good himself according to the Christian doctrine. So he became he just one day just said, you know what, I'm I'm I want to be I want to be the uh, I want to be the king of of the the heavens, and basically they're like, 
they had they having their own little <laughs> secret meetings. Satan Satan is with them with their own little secret meetings. And every every day he just <laughs> goes to um sorry, I'm trying to look for this scripture. In Psalm Psalm seventy eight. I'm trying to explain. So he over there at a secret council meeting, trying to get every every day he trying to get some angels to to follow through with his plan. And so eventually he got he kept having his secret councils meeting. Why? Yeah, how wasn't paying attention? And he's like, yeah, yeah, we gonna do this. We gonna overthrow and all this stuff. Therefore, ain't Satan had to convince all the good angels to to convert to being evil and then the good ones was like nah we don't we don't want no part of this and they, and they let they left the whole situation alone that's that's the and then for that to happen for that to happen the most high couldn't be the most high because he was caught slipping his his uh creations got got out of control and and he couldn't handle it and see he had to just he had to just cast them out he had to just kick them out and go sent them sent them down to hell and now everybody that's bad goes up there no let me get this psalm 70 i'm not i'm not gonna pull it up on screen i'm just gonna read it from my uh, the book psalms 78 and verse 49 he cast upon them fierceness of his anger wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them so there's another scripture say the Lord created everything for himself. Yeah, even the uh, paraphrasing, even the uh, what to say the wicked or evil or the wicked, even the wicked for the day of evil. Some along those lines. So everything that he made was already made like that. Ain't nothing. Just Satan was not just an uh, uh, angelic, nice being and and uh, and 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 hugful and and beautiful and peaceful and then one day he just had the thought that he's tired of being being under uh, under the most high he wanted to rebel that's nowhere in the scriptures man that's that's a stronghold on our people man that hell and and satan rebelling is is a a stronghold man and the more and more you start to think about some of this stuff that they tell you it does not make sense like it's 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 foolish <clears throat> it's it's nothing but madness and and confusion, man. And that's one of the strongholds that we that we have to let go is that Satan rebelled <clears throat> from the most high. He never did that. And if he if that was the case, then why why then he he killed Job? Why didn't Satan kill Job when he told him not to kill him? This question's got asked, man. That's actually in the scriptures. Let's keep going. Let's, let's let's crush this hell real quick because there because once you start to debunk if you want to use that word or disprove at least disprove once you disprove one doctrine of of that christianity stuff all the stuff falls out of line because they have to continue to stretch forth the lies so much to make it fit to make it fit that once you disprove one little thing then therefore the other stuff can't be real for an example right now just disprove that that satan does what he wants to do and he rebelled that he rebels against the most high he's underground and all that stuff so what does that prove if satan's up there with the most high therefore hell can be real right it can't be because satan is supposed to be underground and he's supposed to have all the demons there with him but is that the case no <clears throat> Let's get this. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 7. Then shall the dust return to earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. And what is the dust? This fleshly, this fleshly body right here. This is the dust. The dust and ashes, man. It returns unto the earth, into the ground, as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. 
So when when did did did, did Satan give give us the spirits? No. So where are we all going? We're all gonna be in the heavens, man. It doesn't matter how wicked how wicked you were. It doesn't matter if you was a serial killer. It doesn't matter if you murdered your mom. It doesn't matter if you stole candy from a, a shop. It doesn't it doesn't matter what you've been doing in in your life, man. You going up there to the Most High once you die, man. When you die, your spirit ascends up and to be in the heavens with the most high man you get your judgment and you live out your judgment here and they think they look and this this also about to break this this hell and nonsense because what i'm about to read in ecclesiastes it says that moreover under the sun i saw the place of judgment i i, I thought is is the heavens where where the most high is is that is that underneath the sun no so how so how is it that you your judgment is you going to hell and and you and you being dead and you going to burn for all eternity? Cause I know when you when you die that's that's your how you die is like is your judgment. Don't get me wrong, what I'm saying. So a lot of people are gonna twist what I just said and and make it something that I was not that I never said. When you die. How you die, that's your judgment, man. Then you go up to the to the uh to the throne where the most high is, you receive your judgment, and then you get you get back sent down to the earth to live out your judgment. So when, when people get hit by cars, uh die of heart attacks or get mild <laughs> mauled by a shark at a beach, uh <laughs> all types of stuff, get shot eighty times. Or whatever situation, a refrigerator fall on you and suffocate you to death, or whatever, whatever, how you die, man, that's your judgment, man. <clears throat> oh, here, oh, here we go, right here. The, the, the back of what I was saying about it doesn't matter if he was evil or not. I didn't, I didn't even think about getting this. I was going to go to the next scripture. <clears throat> but here we go. Ecclesiastes 12 and 14. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment, whether with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So no matter what you did, all your works is going to be accounted in your day of judgment, man. All the good stuff you've done and all the evil stuff you've done. It doesn't matter. you so evil. You, you, your, your evil outweighs the good. So you, he going he gonna to depart from me. And pull a lever and you go, ah, fall from heaven. You go, fall, fall from heaven. Come down. You go, look, 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 this how, look how, listen how dumb this sounds. You, he going to depart from me, pull a lever or whatever he says or whatever the Christians believe. You going to fall from the heavens. You going to fall all the way down. You going to be falling. You going to be descending out of the sky. Then, then, once you get close to the earth, your spirit is just gonna go straight through the ground, <laughs> through the ground, and you're gonna just end up just stopping in the middle of the earth. Look at, and then, under the middle of the earth, you have Satan, Satan just over here rubbing his hands together. Yeah, I got another one. And, and, and turns on, turn on his, uh, his, his thermostat. And and put the fire up all the way. Now you in a jail cell with some demons. Now you in a cell with some demons burning forever. Come on now. How how dumb does that sound? How dumb does that sound? That just sound that, that and that's why our people don't believe in, in, in the scriptures, man. One of the main reasons is because it sounds like a fairy tale, man. Just like Adam Adam and Eve. Oh, a serpent was 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 hissing into us, talking snake. Was was talking to Adam and Eve. And then somehow they ate an apple, which was never described in Genesis whatsoever. There's no kind of the fruit or what the fruit was, as in actual fruit like a, a mango or a pineapple. Or that that's never discussed that's never in the scriptures as that. So how do we know it was an apple? It's just going off, man. Just going off. Just <laughs> keep going, man. Hey, if you really start to start to listen and say that, that what Christians believe. That Christianity, what they believe outside 
Like, if you say that out loud, you would realize how much madness that is. Let's get to the scripture. I'm trying to think where I want to start. I'm going to start at 14. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 14. I know that whatsoever the Most High doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And the Most High doeth it, the men should fear before him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And the Most High required requireth that which is past and moreover i saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there and the place of and the place of righteousness that iniquity was there I, i'm just gonna, i'm just gonna read all the way down and this other point that i wanted so under the sun is the place of judgment was under the sun or come on now we live out your judgment on earth. Um, keep going. I said in mine heart, the Most High shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that the Most High might manifest them, and that they might see that themselves are beasts for that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts every one thing befalleth them as the one dieth so dieth the other yea they they have all one breath so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast for all is vanity all go unto one place all are of the dust and all turn to dust again. All go unto one place. When you die, no matter if you Moab, you Esau, you're an Israelite, you're an Ishmaelite, it does not you're an Ammonite, it does not matter, man. You're going up to one place. So where is hell at? If everybody's going to one place, where is hell? If Satan never rebelled, where is hell? I'm telling you, all that all that Christian doctrine has to line up perfectly for everything to make sense. Because like I said, if Satan never rebelled, therefore hell can't exist. And if hell doesn't exist, therefore when we all die, we go to one place. You see what I'm saying? See how all that stuff links together and once you prove one or be wrong, all of it's false. Even all of it's false anyway. But once you prove one of those things wrong, it's like a domino. You knock all the rest of that the bull that that bull down, man. Cause what we've been taught our whole life in, in churches is bullshit. They they literally they didn't have I can't think of one thing that they got right. I can't think of one thing that they got right. Talking about the laws done away with wrong. Satan, Satan rebelled. Wrong. Hell is a hell is a place that we go. Wrong. Yahweh is a white man. Wrong. <laughs> and the list goes on and on and on. You can eat pork. Wrong. Pray over whatever food that you want to. As long as you pray over, you can eat it. Wrong. Peter's vision. Wrong. Wasn't even dealing with food. Just made a lesson about that. So all this stuff is just wrong, man. And you have to let those strongholds go, man. You can't come into this truth preaching fallen angels and, and hell, man. The way that it's taught. Can't do that, man. There's not going to be nothing but confusion and madness. So I can. I got this already. No, let's keep going. Oh, let me get this real quick. Uh, come on, the law being done. Why? Okay, this is another thing. The law is done away with. Why is throughout the whole scriptures it tells you to keep the commandments? 
Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. If this is our whole duty, why was the law done away with? Think about that. If this is the whole duty of man, when why would the law be done away with? If this is if this is our duty to fear the most high and keep the commandments. <laughs> Makes no sense. Let's get this to back up that. Matthew 5 and verse 17. Uh, let me get this. Let me get this too. Let me do this. Now, you know what red letter means. So, let's let's do this real quick. So now cuz I, I have a question for you for you for you that Christianity doctrine. 5 Matthew 5 verse 17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not to come to destroy. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, is heaven and earth still here? Yes. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So her, heaven and earth is still here, right? Let's keep going. Whosoever therefore shall break, then this is the question I got right here. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach man so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. So if you're breaking the commandments and you're telling people that it's okay to break the commandments, you can eat that pork, brother. You can go ahead and make that bacon sausage sandwich, brother. You can go go down to, uh, to Red Lobster and throw down endless shrimp buffet, brother. The law is done away with. Now, this is out of Yahweh's own mouth. Why would he say... If you shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so, you should be called in the least commandment. You should be called in the least in the kingdom of heaven. That's my question. If the law is done away with, we're not supposed to keep the law. Why is, is Yahweh addressed in a situation of people teaching people that it's okay to break the law? And then you're going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And his other part of the question. He shall be called and he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do do the commandments and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven let that sink in real quick we're gonna let that sink in now if you're breaking the commandments and teaching people to do so you're gonna be called least in the kingdom if you're keeping the commandments doing the commandments to your best of your abilities and you're teaching people to keep the commandments you're gonna be called great in the kingdom of heaven the law is done away with why are you going to be called least if you're teaching people not to do the law? Telling people the law is done away with. Where Where is the the balance? Where is the order? Where is the sense in that, man? There is none. You Christians. Christianity. I'm not going to say Christian because the real Christians are the Israelites. But that Christianity and you, you Edomites. You Edomite Christians out there, which you're not a Christian. You're not a real Christian. Y'all teaching that fake doctrine, man. That is is a, a major stronghold of our people, man. A major that law's done. Every time you talk to every time you talk to uh, a so called Christian man, they, they give you three answers. Law's done away with. I can pray whatever I want and then I it, that makes it clean I, and therefore I can eat it. And then three, they go to Peter in his vision talking about food. And if you read, if the clearly, honestly, you didn't read clearly all the way down in Acts, the 10th chapter. Because once you get to the 28th verse, it tells you what the vision was. There's nothing but confusion. Y'all got to let that law, that law is done away with spirit. You got to let that go. We just, we just disproved it. Oh, let me get, hold on. I mean. Let me drive the point here. Let me let me completely drive the point home right here. Completely drive the point home right here. Let's get this scripture. Baruch. Right there. Baruch 4 and 1. Let's get this real quick. And let's drive this point home. 
Baruch 4 verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High. And the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. If the law is done away with, why is we not leaving, if we leave the commandments and the law, why are we going to die? If the law is done away with, if that does not matter. Then this, then it just says the law that endureth forever. No, it's only going to be endured. The law is only here for a certain amount of time. This, this is the madness, man. We, Christ kept the law. When he got on the Christ, when he got on uh, on the cross, he nailed he nailed the law to him. So now, so then, then, then Christians do this. Now it's grace, brother. Now it's grace. So that means we can completely go off and just do. It. Can, if I can be your murderer and I'm under grace, so I'll be good. No, <laughs> that's the madness and the confusion that's with this man. And on top of that, let's let's keep going. This, this is how mad. This is how much confusion and madness this is. So. Christ kept the law. Christ. I'm going to use that word. That name. He kept the law. When he died, he nailed it to the cross. Then, now we're, now we're saved by grace. Now we don't have to keep the law because grace is abound. So now, now in the new covenant, he's going, they're, he's going to put the, the law in our inward parts so we can be perfect and we cannot can sin no more. Where's the where's the the sense in that? So we're gonna he kept the law, and they kept the law back then. Then we're going to stop keeping the law because he nailed it to the cross. But then he's going to turn around and put the laws in the inwards part so we can continue to keep the law, even though it was done away with when we was under grace. Is that not confusion and madness? And that's and that's the stuff that they have to all bring in. They have to bring all that stuff in to make. That Christianity, God loves everybody, spirit, doctrine fit in, man. Which is not the case. Let's get this last scripture, and then we're going to keep going. Get, break these strongholds, man. Break these strongholds. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house is of this tabernacle, we're dissolved. We have a building of the most high in a house not made with hands internal in the heavens. For this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, being that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up in life. I'm going to jump down. I'm going to get to the point. Um, 5 verse 8. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we, we labor that where, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear, this also, here we go, back to uh, the judgment, what I was getting back into in Ecclesiastes. We, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. I want to get, hold on. Uh, okay, I'm going to read first. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Now, look. Right now, we're absent. Did it, say, did it say absent from Satan and the Lord? Or did it say absent from the Lord? While we are in this fleshly body on earth, we are absent the presence from the Most High. You know why? Because our spirit is inside this earthly tabernacle, man. Our spirit is being harnessed inside this flesh body. This is like, this is our vessel. This is the vessel, man. And when we're not in this vessel, we're up there with the Most High. 
Where does it say in here that you, if you not, if you not in your flesh and you not on earth, you with Satan? It didn't say Satan in here. It said the Lord. I mean, how about Shimmy out shop, man? Are we? Are we? We're absent because we're in the flesh right now. But when we die, where does your spirit go? All going to one place, and that's when you are absent from your body, and that's when you are present with the Lord in the spiritual realm. That that's that that's hell is 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 gone, man. Once you have to read the scriptures, understand them, it's gone, man. Those that doctrine is out the window, man. Doctrine is completely gone. And this is the backup, the other point, and we're and we're not in the new covenant. We're not in the new covenant. We're not in the new covenant. Uh, let's get that real quick because scripture they they we're in the new covenant, brother. No, no, no. Let's find out if we are in the new covenant. I'm just gonna get straight to the point. Hebrews eight and eight. For finding fault with them, he said, "Behold, the days come," said the Lord, "when I will make a new covenant." When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Where is everybody else mentioned in that? Where is the house of Esau and house of Ishmael? Not in here. Verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in, in the day when I took them by the hand to lead, lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continue not in my covenant, in my covenant and regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with them. With the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people and they shall not teach every man his neighbor. So how are we in the new covenant? Aren't people teaching right now on the highways and byways making lessons? Aren't they teaching right now? Teaching what? Teach every man his neighbor, every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. Aren't we telling people to know the Lord? Aren't we telling people to come back to who we are? And in the new covenant, that's not going to be happening because everybody's going to know. How, how do we know? Everybody's going to know. Let's find out. Uh, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So everybody's going to know. But does everybody know right now? No. <laughs> so how are we in the new covenant, man? And then right here, when we read 13, Hebrews 8, 13, and that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old, now which decayeth and waxed old is ready to vanish away. It didn't say it's gone. When something is ready, did, did it, is it gone? No. It's like saying you, you ready, you ready to leave the house. You get all your, your bag, let's say you go on a trip. Got your bags packed, but you ready to leave, but you didn't leave it, but you ready. And just like the old covenant, it's ready to vanish away, but it has not vanished away. Breaking these strongholds, man. Now, let's address this, and we can ready to end this lesson. <clears throat> Addressing the God loves everybody. And we all thinking, when y'all think of that God, and y'all thinking about Jesus, y'all thinking about that Ray Bush, that white man, Esau, Esau. Let's get this. God loves everybody. Let's find out that God loves everybody. Let's find out. Let's find out everybody. Hold on, Slockhead's doing some weird every time. All right. Um, I'm going to go start at 11. We're going to get to the point. <clears throat> Romans 9, verse 11. For the children being not yet born... Neither having done any good or evil. Who is the children that's talking about? Let's find out. That the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand. Not of works, but him that calleth. It was said unto her. Slack here. It was said unto her. The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written. Jacob have I loved. Who is Jacob? The Twelve tribes. The Israelites. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. He see he was talking. He hated his sin. He hated his sin. He he didn't like what he did. Didn't it just say before? Before, uh, let's let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. 
because even Jake Jake trusts this man. It says for the children being not yet born, neither doing having done any good or evil. He already hated Esau when he was before he was born. That's how he was made, man. And that goes back to the lesson I made about you Christians don't understand the Most High. The Most High, this is his movie. He does his movie how he wants to, man. And if y'all can't accept that, then it's not for you. Go go back in that church on Sunday with Pastor Porchop with, with no beards and with a bald head. And you you follow him. And you follow him. Because this is, this is not for you. If he wanted to make somebody to hate and to destroy, he can do that. But y'all don't complain when y'all watch movies. Y'all don't. Y when y'all watching love and hip hop, that's scripted. When y'all watching love and hip hop or uh, movies or, or video games when when characters die, and then therefore you have to understand that's really honestly the same concept, but not you know, but not the same thing because it's the Most High. And when people when people make these movies or these video games, they know who's gonna die and who's gonna do what. Before the movie is made. Because they have to make the script first right. So they know. It's the same exact thing. And whatever they might make a character. Like Thanos. Perfect example. Endgame. They raised Thanos up. He was super powerful. He was beating everybody. He was the king of the universe. And they raised him. I don't. I, don't, I can't say it. But I'm pretty sure in, in the end game. I didn't watch it. So I'm pretty sure in the end game. Thanos loses. They raised him up to be that powerful man. And at the end what happened. He lost. They raised him up. He was doing all that damage and destruction. And at the end he lost. And they knew that from the beginning. When they made that movie. That that was going to happen. They he, they raised him up to be this this magnificent person. Just how he's raising up Esau. Just to throw him down. That's what the most high is man. That love everybody spirit. That lovey dubby. Happy. Happy. Uh. Flowers and, and daffodils and hugs and kisses and gift cards and, and rainbows is not the most high man. Yeah, the most high is love, but he has a perfect balance. Doesn't it say a false balance is an abomination to the Lord? And then now here we go. Let's continue. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the most high? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth, but the most high that showeth mercy. For the for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose, have I raised thee up that I might shew my power in thee that my name might be declared through all throughout all the earth. Therefore, hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, and whom he will harden. Didn't he harden his fear of heart to, to chase out the children of Israel, the children of Israel, not to let let uh let him go? So yeah, and then he there goes into the 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 clay. He can make one clip to honor one. Uh, let me just get it real quick. Um, twenty one nine verse twenty one Romans nine verse twenty one. Hath not the powder power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if the Most High willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endure with much long serving to the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Well, that's fine. Let's find out who, who that vessel is. <laughs> Let's go. Most High does not love everybody. And he hates. He hates a specific group. He hates Esau. And no, it was not because of what his sin. Didn't it just say in Romans that, uh, cause that's definitely a stronghold. Cause Jake, Jake liked to do that so they can, so they can coon for Esau. So they can coon for the white man. That's, that's all Jake used that for. And there's nowhere in the scriptures, where does it say that he hated his sin? And then that's, and that's why he hated him. Not in here. Let's get this. Malachi 1 verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, said the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas 
Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Let's get, let's get this word indignation. Let's get this. To have indignation, be angrily abhorrent to express indignation in speech, denounce, curse, to show indignation, show anger. Foam at the mouth, enraged, abhor, abominable, angry. It's a righteous anger he has towards Esau. And he made them to hate them. And he made them to destroy them. That's their role in the movie, man. Get over it. Why? I can't believe a Most High would make people and he hates them and he's going to make them to destroy them and made, made them to serve other people. Yes. Get over it, man. Another stronghold. A lot of these, a lot of these, mostly women. Actually, no, it's Jake. It's mostly Jake. They they can't get over this part. How would the Most High just, just make somebody just, just destroy them? That's not then 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 they want to start going against scripture. That's not the that's not the God that I will serve, brother. Why would God do that? God loves everybody. Nowhere in the scriptures. And you you believe that? That's what the scripture says. And the people people have a hard time people have a hard time digesting that, man. He made people to destroy them. That's their role in the movie, man. After a thousand years of captivity, they're going to be done away with. That's their role. That's Esau's role in the movie, man. And they're, and they're going to fulfill that role. Perfectly. And they're they just being devils. That's all they're doing. Just being devils. It's great to close this lesson out. <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah. To who, who are the people to curse the judgment? Let's get that. Let's prove this point. Isaiah thirty four and four, and all the all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and as, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, the, new, the mushroom cloud. Yes, where rule three is in the Bible. And all the hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come upon Idumia, Edom. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. There you have it. Let's prove that Idumia is Esau, Edom. Real quick, because people eat them. There you go, right there. A dome. Eat them. Eat them. Red. Edomite. Idumian. Descendants of Esau. Land of Edom. Idumia. Land of south. Land south and southeast of Palestine. Esau. Eat them. Caucasians. The white men. And let's get this final stronghold. The description of the, description of the Savior is not in the book, brother. Okay, let's find out. Like him, throw was getting dry. Revelation 1 and verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, a girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, white is the color. Wool is the texture, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. That's three strikes already on, on the uh, Cesare Bourgier image. Nothing, nothing like how he's being described in the, uh, in the thing, I mean Revelation. And his feet, uh oh, here we go, like unto fine brass, uh oh, as if they burnt in a furnace, a very dark brother. 
Brass is already a, a, a brownish color. And now it says that it's burned in the furnace. And his voice is as the sound of many waters. A loud speaking austere man. You have a shot. So uh where where is that, that white man, that virgin that virgin married? I'm gonna have to make a lesson about that. I gotta get into that because that that's another stronghold too. Here it is that the, <laughs> the angels came down and 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 had sex with 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 Mary, even though she she already had a husband. So the, so the angels the man the angels committed adultery. It's another wicked stronghold, but that 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 white Jesus is a stronghold too, a very good stronghold, because. That that's one because you go to your grandma's house, your auntie's house. You go in the kitchen, the living room. There's always that the the Last Supper is a picture of that, or it's just a picture of him just just chilling, man, somewhere in the house. Even they got the little white prayer hands, or it's somewhere, man. It's somewhere, and that's that's one of the biggest ones right there. As long as our people still believe in that, bro, all that doctrine that comes with that white man is going is going to stay in their mind. So you telling me I'm going to go to hell if I eat pork, brother? And they get all twisted and messed up, and man, <laughs> it's crazy, man. Our people are so far gone; it's ridiculous. So Israel, let let go of these strongholds, man. Let go, because. It's it's not going it's it's not going it's going to confuse you and and lead you astray. So with that, I'm gonna get ready to close out the lesson. Lord willing, the lesson was edifying. Um, once again, I want to give all honor and all praises unto Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shah, Bashem Rakhak Kadash. Double honor to our apostles and elders that rule well. Salutations to your sincere brothers and your hopeful elect out there. And your sincere sisters that's teaching this, well, not sisters teaching, but the brothers teaching the words. And your sincere sisters out there, if y'all watching.